Hello and welcome to the best football show. I am Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL. Come find me on any of the platforms, uh, Instagram, Twitter, X, Threads, YouTube, you name it, uh, NFL Network. I'm on there uh, almost daily right now. And come find us on your free Odyssey app, the best football show. You can download it, like it, subscribe, all that good stuff. So we are uh, going through that process with just over two weeks to go before the draft. We were just kind of analyzing division by division, all eight divisions in the NFL. And we started with the NFC West yesterday. And today we want to get to the rest of the NFC West, Seattle and to Arizona. Uh, we had covered San Francisco with the Rams. And now let's get to Seattle, the rebuilt Seattle Seahawks. I don't know if they're rebuilding, but they're definitely in a transition mode. Mike McDonald comes in for the legendary Pete Carroll. Uh, kind of caught everybody by surprise when that decision was made. Uh, John Schneider, the general manager, done an excellent job drafting, um, is still in place. Personnel people still in place. They have drafted well. Seattle was 9-8 and eight last year, kind of lost their way. A little bit, Geno Smith didn't have quite the same year as a year ago, but there's a lot of changes. Mike McDan Mc McDonald brings a lot of college coaches to his staff. He was a former linebacker coach, defense coordinator with um, the Michigan Wolverines under Jim Harbaugh, went and played for Jim's brother and was the play. He went and coached uh, the last two years, number one defensive football with uh, Jim's brother, John, in Baltimore, and they were outstanding. And so you look at the staff, and I think it's very interesting that Ryan Grubb was his choice as offensive coordinator. He's never coached in the NFL. But he's coached throughout college a variety of positions. But most recently, he was on Kalen DeBoer's staff at Washington. And at the last two years, he coached Michael Penix Jr. and Roma Dunze and Jalen Polk and Jalen McMillan. And they had the best passing offense, the, back, the best deep passing offense in all of college football. I don't even think it's debatable. They were 14-0 this year before they lost to Michigan. Uh, Michael Penix flourished in the offense. But it was bombs away. And so you look at this, and I don't know if Geno Smith is going to play that style and if, you know, Ryan Grubb is going to play that style where you take your shots one after another, any game you want to watch. Watch Washington against Texas, the ball's going down the field. So, but if you think about it, you got Geno Smith and Sam Howell, who they picked up, you know, from Washington, who has just started 18 straight games in this league, and he's got a big NFL arm, was sacked a bunch and hurried a bunch in Washington, and they've made a change with their coaching change and everything that they're doing in Washington. So, you know, Seattle flushed out, uh, you know, a, a backup quarterback to go to the New York Giants, and they bring in Sam Howell. So Geno Smith gets the job. He's been pretty good. Uh, but if you think about DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, and you want to throw down the ball down the field, those are that's a pretty good trio. That's a pretty good trio if you want to go deep just the way the University of Washington did. So it's just something to kind of think about. Um, you know, they have been rebuilding this offensive line for a while. You know, they had drafted Charles Cross, a big eight Lucas, two years ago. Last year, they get Olu uh, from Michigan. Uh, they get uh, the right guard out of LSU, Bradford. They kind of put their offensive line together. So <clears throat> defensively, one of the reasons why I think there is a coaching change is they weren't very good defensively. They were 25th ranked defense last year. Both starting linebackers, Jordan Brooks, and Bobby Wagner are gone. Uh, both starting safeties, Jamal Adams, uh, Quandre Diggs are gone. There looks like there is a need. Now they went out in free agency and they picked up Tyrell, Tyrell Dotson from Buffalo and Jerome Baker from Miami to be the interior linebackers. Um, their pass rush, Boye Mafe, Going into his third year, had his best year. He even proved he had nine sacks last year. Jerron Reed's been a solid player. Daryl Taylor from Tennessee, like probably four years ago. They're pretty good. But if you think about the Baltimore Ravens and what Mike McDonald did defensively in Baltimore, they led the league in sacks. And Justin Matabike, in his second year, flourished. Um, Pro Bowl player. And they were kind of built around his interior push and his suddenness in the pass rush, stopping the run game. And so, you know, you look at what Seattle is right now and how they can compete 
in the NFC West. I believe offensively they have a chance to be pretty good, especially with Ryan Grubb at offense coordinator. So what Mike McDonald does is he plays this matchup zone defense. One of the reasons why I think the safeties are gone, Quandre Diggs along with uh, Jamal, because their safety's got to cover. They match you up after the ball is snapped. They give you a pre-snap look, ball gets snapped, you wait for these route combination to take place, and you you match up against it. Safety's got to be able to cover. You got to be able to match up. So, I think that you know if you look at Witherspoon, you look at Tariq Woolen. I think they're pretty good. You look at Kobe Bryant; they're pretty good at corner. I mean, they got their two outside guys, and they got their interior Kobe Bryant. I think they, I think they need uh, defensive line help for sure uh, to try to get after quarterbacks to get after, you know, Matt Stafford, to get after uh, Brock Purdy. And so I would expect with the 16th pick, they could do a lot of things. There's a lot of speculation, and I'm amongst those that have speculated that with their 16th pick in the first round, they don't have a second-round pick. But with their 16th pick, I feel like if Michael Penix was there, it would make a lot of sense. I mean, I I think Michael Penix is the second-best quarterback in this whole draft. I make – I have no qualms about saying that. I have been saying that after Caleb Williams. I've been saying that Michael Penix is the second best quarterback. And oh, by the way, Ryan Grubb coached him for two years in Washington. That I could put that link together and then you go, okay, well, there's Geno and Sam Howell there. Okay. You know, if you can upgrade any position, you upgrade it. Um, it's a consideration. But, you know, with no second round pick, and I think this is a draft that there's going to be a lot of good players taking the second round. I could see John Schneider working the board, fielding offers for who I don't know. But if you wanted to drop down, you know, 16 down into the 20s, um, you know, and and gain a second round pick, um, you could do that. They have a third round pick and two fourth round picks. I feel like the defensive front, I know, you know, Leonard Williams is coming back and Mafe and Taylor are pretty good. But I think they need a real star, young star defensive lineman. Who knows? If Dallas Turner was available, could you pass him up? If Jared Verse was available at 16, could you pass him up? Um, you know, if you could get a second round pick, could you go get yourself an inside linebacker like Peyton Wilson at North Carolina State or Edron Cooper at Texas A&M? I feel like that's the sweet spot, you know, the first half of the second round um, at inside linebacker. So those are some of, I think, the – and then I think you could look at offensive guard, I, not with the 16th pick, but I think you could look at guard. You know, you got Bradford, you got Olu, you know, this is a good you – know, like Cooper Beebe, second round, you know, can Graham Barton play guard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you could upgrade the offensive line here in this draft as well. So that's, that's Seattle. Mike McDonald, best of luck, replacing a legend in Pete Carroll. Uh, and then you get to the Arizona Cardinals. And, you know, look, Jonathan Gannon had a rough first year. Monty Austin Fort had a tough first year. But they knew that. They knew that going in, that, you know, Kyler Murray was on the mend. He wasn't going to play the first half of the season. And they threw some quarterbacks in there, Joshua Dobbs. But if you look, really watch Arizona play, they were very competitive. And in, in probably out of the 17 games, they were highly competitive in 12 of them. And they remember, they beat the Dallas Cowboys. They went to Philly and whipped Philadelphia. They went to Pittsburgh and beat Pittsburgh. James Conner had a a homecoming back in Pittsburgh, had a good day. James Conner was a really good player last year. Averaged five yards a carry, had over 1,000 yards, kind of rebuilt their offensive line. Paris Johnson Jr. came in. Um, You know, Froholt at center came in. Will Anderson or Will Hernandez at right guard started every game. And, uh, you know, I think they really – did a good job. Now, I think there's a lot of different things that's going on here. Like, A, they ran the ball very well last year. Kyler played good. I didn't play great, but he played good. Um, but, look, Trey McBride was their best receiver. He had 81 catches. It looked like the offense went through their tight end, Trey McBride, who looks like he had a breakout season last year. Look, he had 81 catches last year. I can see Trey McBride getting 100. Uh, and then defensively, look, they weren't very good. They were 31st-ranked defense. You know, they make no bones about it. They're just trying to find players. Kazir White came in 
free agent from Philly, came with Jonathan Gannon, played great until he got hurt. I mean, played great. Uh, was amongst the leaders and tackles in this league until, you know, he got knocked out. Uh, they went out and got three interior defensive linemen. All right, Blau Nichols, Kyrus Tongan, you know, and uh, Justin Jones. I mean, quality players, but not elite players. And they've got Zayvon Collins, who they moved to the outside linebacker, along with uh, Dennis Gardeck, who led the team in sacks with six. Um, they need help on defense. They need help on defense for sure. Now, let's look at the draft for the Arizona Cardinals. They have the most draft capital of any team in this draft. They've got 11 picks. They've got two in the first round. They got the fourth pick, and they got the 27th pick. Now, I don't think anybody doesn't believe that quarterbacks are going one, two, three. And, and, and who knows? Maybe New England trades out and somebody trades in with them. I don't think anybody doesn't believe that the quarterbacks are going one, two, three. And if Arizona wants to trade out, they might go one, two, three, four. It's just that kind of a draft. And that's what a lot of people are saying. So Arizona sitting there at four. They need receivers in the worst way. They just lost, you know, Elijah Moore. They lost Hollywood Brown. They got Trey McBride. They need receivers. Now, there's Marvin Harrison Jr. is right there. Uh, there was a time when Arizona was going to a Super Bowl and they had Anquan uh, Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald. And, you know, it was as good a one-two punch as it was in pro football for quite a stretch. They were a fantastic duo. Could they get Marvin Harrison Jr. at four? I, there won't be a single fan in Arizona that wouldn't be happy with that pick. Now, you could trade out of there and get more capital and maybe get Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors and help out your offensive line and start addressing the defense. So, you know, they've got six of the first 90 picks. Six. Like uh, Paris Johnson Jr. was a good pick last year. I think he played every snap for the Cardinals last year at right tackle. Good kid. Good kid. Good player. Played better than I thought he would play. Uh, you know, Monty Osvort showed that he, he can draft. Uh, he could put – he can – fine. So the Arizona Cardinals could make a big jump from a four-win team, 4-13 four and 13 a year ago with, like I said, upsets, Philly, Dallas, Pittsburgh. Um, they play hard for Jonathan Gannon. I like watching them play. I like watching them compete. Uh, the game's got away from them at the end, but they need defensive players. Let's face it. I, I love the safety tandem of Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. Um, they're they're amongst the best in the league. They got you know corners. Byron, uh, they got corners. Um, they drafted one last year. It's pretty good, but they need defensive line help. They need linebackers. They need corners. They need receivers. I don't know in what order. Uh, they also, they drafted Michael Wilson last year in the third round of Stanford, who's a big receiver, not exceptionally fast, but he's a big, got a big catch radius. All right. So James Conner was awesome last year. Uh, they ran the ball well. They just, they just need to keep building. You know, Trey McBride is a building block. Paris Johnson Jr. is a building block. You know, I mean, you, you, you can go through the roster and you can find building blocks. Um, for this football team. And that's what they're, they're concentrating on. So I think when you look at this draft, like Arizona needs to come away. They got six of the first 90 picks. They need to come away with three starters, maybe four, because they might draft two receivers and they could both start. And we've seen receivers come into this business and have great success right away. They, they more than likely will draft two wide receivers. So you got six of the first 90, and you got depth at receiver, depth in the offensive line, uh, a good cornerback class, maybe not elite, but a good cornerback class. Uh, I could see some of those positions taken where they could upgrade some, some of those positions. And so I think Arizona is on the way up because of how hard they play. I like the general manager, Monty Osford. I think him and Jonathan Gannon work real well together. So – I'm anxious. I'm anxious to see uh, this seven rounds and where Arizona picks and what they do, because really there's some people that I'll, I'll finish with this here today. If the quarterbacks go chalk one, two, three, and let's just say it goes chalk, literally Chicago, Caleb, you know, Washington, Jaden Drake and New England, Jaden Drake. Let's just say it goes chalk. 
the draft might start at number four. Does somebody want the fourth, you know, quarterback? Does somebody want the first offensive lineman? Does somebody want the first wide receiver? So Arizona, you know, if you're if you're Arizona right now, you're feeling every call before the draft, and once once they're on the, the uh, you know, and depending on what happens, one, two, and three, like you're working the phones, you're working the phones, and you're going to try and get the best deal and maximize your picks the best you can. Like they're going to be a fun team to really follow and watch in this draft. That's been the NFC West. I'm Brian Baldinger. Come find me uh, every day this week. I'll be breaking down divisions. And next week, I'll be breaking down really the top five players at every position. And this year, for the first time, I'm going to be breaking down slot receivers and slot corners since they're basic starters in this league right now. So thanks for joining me. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow.